Hey guys, welcome back to Shutter Magazine. I'm Dustin Lucas, and today I'm really excited to talk to you about Lightroom Creative Cloud. Let's start by going to the Adobe website, and I'm gonna show you just how uh, easy it is to start. So you have options with Creative Cloud now. Um, you have monthly subscription options, which uh, turn out to be a 12 month uh, monthly subscription for you for $10. $10 for Photoshop, Lightroom, and you get uh, Adobe Bridge as well. Um, you get a uh, Lightroom mobile version and a Lightroom web version as well. Um, so let's go, let's dive into uh, let's dive into Lightroom and see where the changes are. First, I want to start out with um, those of you that have worked in previous versions of Lightroom, the biggest differences in uh, in the upgrade really are just the some of the tools and, and new adjustments and the mobility of uh, the new version of Lightroom. There isn't too many differences. The smart previews option is going to be the same. Um, and the big thing is that they didn't change the color process. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. So I have here a Lightroom 5 catalog. I'm going to go ahead and open that up in Lightroom 5 and show you the sort of color process that they've left in uh, Adobe Lightroom. And the latest color process is still at 2012. And so the difference with that versus the 2010 version is you're seeing how um, the tonality of my image is changing. So the nice thing is, is that they haven't changed this 2012 um, process. Uh, it's the same way in Lightroom 5 as it is in Lightroom CC. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this catalog, and I'm going to go ahead and open this in Lightroom CC. And so what it's going to do is it's going to ask me to upgrade this catalog. And I'm going to go ahead and, and click OK. And what you're going to notice is it's going to give me a duplicate copy of my catalog. So it's giving me this 5-2. Let me go back to that. This 5-2 is this new Creative Cloud catalog that it created, and it did not affect or tamper with my original Lightroom 5 catalog. So you have uh, two copies of that original catalog. And so it's going to ask you every time you open up Creative Cloud if you're interested in taking on um, Lightroom Mobile. And you can turn that off um, or leave it on and click continue. And it's going to ask if you'd like to sync this catalog and that all has to do with your Adobe Creative Cloud storage. Um, I think the default for Adobe Creative Cloud is around 500 megabytes. I think I've tapped out my, uh, my mobile device. I haven't bought any um, Creative Cloud storage yet. Um, but it's something to definitely take advantage of if you're interested in, in using, uh, using their mobile technology to sort of make your work workflow a little more efficient between your phone, your tablets, and your computer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit Don't Sync for now. Um, in this catalog here, what we're going to go into this image, and I'm going to show you that the color process in Lightroom Creative Cloud hasn't changed at all. Still at the 2012, which is great. They haven't made any big jumps yet. Um, you know, we're kind of in the, the midst a uh, an upgrade for the color uh, color profile and the color process. Um, and so I don't know if they're going to update it with the newest version of Creative Cloud, but right now, um, 2012 is uh, currently exchangeable between both programs. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this catalog, and let's jump into to some of the changes that Lightroom made. And so here I've created this catalog in Creative Cloud, so it's not going to ask me to upgrade or any options like that. Uh, so one of the big things that I want to talk about is import and what Lightroom added at the import screen. And you'll notice uh, under the build smart previews and the don't import suspected duplicates and you have the backup um, and your, your ability to apply metadata and develop presets at the import, uh, they added this uh, I think it's a pretty great tool uh, for collections. You can add images directly into a collection. And what I mean by that is, is I can choose a specific work that I'm wanting to import into Lightroom. I can choose what, co what collection I want it to go into. Uh, a concept shoot, engagement. I mean, this one would kind of fall into maybe family or if I had a newborn category. But I can import those directly into those collections to start uh, organizing and sorting my images at import. I think it's pretty great. Another, uh, another feature of Lightroom Creative Cloud, and you might have read about it online or people's positive or negative uh, views of this, of this new software, but you have the ability to sort your images based, by, based on facial recognition. And what that does is it starts to build a database to allow you to keyword images uh, based on these different stacks. And so what I can do is I can go in here and I can type in uh, specific names and it'll add those stacks 
specifically. So I have the ability to start to create stacks of the images based on the how it's recognizing their different faces. And you can, as you can see, as it goes through here, uh, my wife's not going to be too happy that I uh, showcased her on this video. But um, what it's going to start doing is it's going to start building these stacks of photos um, and allowing you to uh, keyword them by groups. I'm going to go ahead and click out of this option for now. Um, if you want to turn off that feature from running, what you can do is you can go into Lightroom, Preferences, and there's an option um, in the catalog settings. So we're going to go down here to the catalog settings. And I think it is, yes, it's right under, it's in the metadata tab. And under face, face detection, it's going to, you can have the option to automatically detect faces. So it's going to be running that process in the background. I unchecked that for uh, performance issues. I don't want, to, want that running in the background. Um, and bringing up performance issues, Lightroom Creative Cloud has made importing files, whether it be from a, your local hard drive or a network hard drive, so much faster. And that's huge when you're talking about importing your images into Lightroom and you're starting to do your calling process as I have uh, with these five stars. And that sort of brings us into uh, another feature that Lightroom Creative Cloud brought in and it allowed metadata filters you to filter by um, ratings and flags. And I always use five stars uh, whenever I'm rating or calling my photos. And so I have the ability to see how many photos I'm rating specifically based on stars. You also have the same ability to look at flags if you're using the pick and unpick um, feature. You know, if you're using the P for pick or U for unpick um, or X for um, rejected. It's pretty great. Um, it's pretty great uh, features. You can start to see once I start selecting images and I start to pick images and unpick, and you start to see the rejected and flagged. Um, so definitely take advantage of, that, of the metadata filtering so that we can sort of see how many images and it kind of gives you a roundabout way of where you're at. I'm gonna put this back to rating. And I wanna move into another feature. I'm gonna go into my five stars and go to a specific photo um, that I had been working in. And this is a live job for me. so. And looking at this photo here, I can, I can view it in the grid mode or in li the library module. And I have the ability to start to adjust uh, the exposure, the contrast, highlights. As you had before, these single arrows meant third stops. The double arrows meant one stop, as you see it says on my cursor. But Lightroom CC allowed the option for you to hold shift. And over that one spot, you can actually increase it by a sixth of a stop, which is pretty huge. I mean, when you go from a difference of say, you know, 0.33 in a decimal sense of a stop, you have the ability to increase an in exposure by about 0.17 is what it does. As you see right here, it, it, up the exposure of 0.17, if I go back to library mode and just click on that once, it's going to throw me up a third stop and it's going to give me that option here. And so it's just a subtle change if you're wanting to just light, just very lightly brighten up these photos. And you have the same abilities you notice in my contrast. Um, when you hold shift, it's supposed to give you just a bump of contrast. See how it only gave me a plus two? And if I go back to the grid mode and just click on that first little uh, triangle, and go back into grid mode, it's supposed to give me a plus five, so it's cutting your, your other adjustments in half as well. Um, I think that's pretty great whenever you want to take the whole catalog and sort of give it a slight bump up, it, whether it be in contrast or exposure, and it's not sort of these huge jumps you're making. It's just a subtle, very subtle adjustment across the whole board. And as you know, you can always select all the photos and do that same adjustment as well. And so when I hold shift and do my exposure, it's gonna adjust all the images pretty instantaneously. But I'm going to go back a couple steps and remove that adjustment. It's not really needed. Just wanted to show you the, the ability that you have um, with that. And so one thing I want to go into now, uh, let's go into the, the uh, develop panel. And I want to show you this new option they have in Lightroom. And it gives you a new option in the erase tool. Um, I know previously you've had the erase tool with your, your standard adjustment brush but now you have it in the graduated filter. So I'm gonna kind of show you how that works. So I'm gonna grab this tool and I'm kind of, I'm gonna extend it to over here. 
And this tool is really great for skies or foregrounds or specifically in this image, I had this blown out window that I'm wanting to, um, say I'm wanting to kill some of that, some of that brightness. I'm going to bring down some of my highlights as well. I don't want to bring, it bring this down too much, but I don't want it to take away from uh, my subject matter here. So I'm just going to bring the window down into there. Well, as you know, with the graduated filter, it's going to fill in all of this area from the top of the photo to the bottom. What you now have is an option. You can go into the brush, and it's going to allow you to add some of that, some of that um, effect in, but you can also, by holding the option key, you can toggle the remove, which is huge. And that's a big thing too when you're using hotkeys in Lightroom because it really, it's really going to make your workflow and your, your image to image working much faster. And that's huge for Lightroom when you're working on, um, you know, in my case, I only have 192 image, but images, but if you have 800, 1,000 images and you're doing these adjustments to, you know, 50 or 60 of them, that could take a lot of time. But what you have the ability to do is you notice that my, uh, my effect is going wherever the, that red mask is going. I have the ability to go in and actually paint away. And I'm holding option while I'm, while I'm painting. But I'm actually holding option and getting rid of all those shadows that don't really need to be darkened. So when I go back in, it's only going to show my effects in the specific red area. So I'd go back in and kind of even out the exposures and the shadows and leave those alone. But it's a huge huge workflow efficiency for your, um, for your image to image. And so you can use that graduated filter to take care of this huge surface real quick and then just use the erase tool to take it back out. I'm gonna go ahead and close that for now. Another option that they brought up is uh, auto straighten in the crop feature. So when you hit the R key, it's gonna take you into um, crop and I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset because I've already done it. But my image, I'm gonna show you my image is a little off kilter. So the vertical, the vertical straightening is a little bit off. So I had the ability to click this auto button. And it's just gonna adjust, it's gonna fix the skew of my image ever so slightly. Um, that's not a huge, a huge adjustment, but it definitely is giving me uh, the ability. You also have, as always, you can hold the command key, and if I were wanting to straighten on this vertical line, I could choose that line to give me my um, you know, the, the vertical, uh, the vertical in this line. Um, I also have the ability, if I wanted the chair to, you know, dictate the straightness of the photo, you know, it would start to get even more skewed. Um, but you have that option for auto, um, which is going to uh, just sort of work. It's going to scan the image and figure out the best, uh, the best straighten, uh, the best vertical or horizontal lines. And then you also, as always, the command key to choose your specific vertical lines. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that where it is and. Click the R key to get back out of out of the crop feature. Um, I wanted to to quickly go over uh, an option that Lightroom brought in, and that is the uh, this photo merge software. Um, and so for a couple photos, I'm going to kind of fake the uh, fake the exposures on them just so that I can take both of these images and do like a photo merge real quick. So I'm going to drop that exposure down, say half a stop, and I brought this one up to a full stop so I can kind of take both of them and bring them into the photo merge. Um, actually, I think that I could probably use that photo and let's leave mine at zero. And I'm gonna leave that at a plus one. So I can actually, t I'm gonna select both of these photos and I'm holding shift and clicking in my film strip here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and go to photo merge HDR, it's that simple. Um, before you had the option to go actually directly into Photoshop. And what this does is it's going to open up a specific uh, image. It's going to export it out of Lightroom, open it up into the uh, Photoshop HDR software. It's most likely going to say that my images are different sized and it's not going to allow me to run them in Photoshop. But this is sort of the process that you would normally go through um, in Photoshop. And I'm going to go ahead and click off that. But what it would do is it's going to render both these images. You do your adjustments, and then it saves a TIFF back into Lightroom. So it actually rasterizes your photo. Um, and the only problem I have with that, I'm going to go ahead and quit Photoshop. Make that save. Um, the only problem I have with that is I don't want to rasterize this photo and lose my the flexibility of this develop panel um, in Lightroom because Lightroom's not going to actually it's not going to rasterize the photo. It's just going to blend them together and, and keep them 
keep them in Lightroom. So we're going to go ahead and right click. We're going to go to Photo Merge. We're going to go to HDR. So it's going to quickly create our HDR preview. I say quickly, and it's probably take a 10, 15 seconds. But um, while it's running here, what it's going to do is it's going to align the photos and making sure that the content is similar. Um, I know that it's these are two different photos, and it's kind of difficult for it to do. But for tonality's sake, it's going to allow me to make these adjustments for the deghosting, which is going to be that edge where the edge starts to um, really start to soften and starts to create that really, really bad effect. Um, and images to images, whenever you have movement, um, specific movement, it's going to um, detract from showing that. Say if you have trees and they're blowing in the wind, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to not keep, say, to the trails of one of the photos. Where some of the branches to where it looks like it sort of has this ghost effects and effect in there, but um, you also have the ability for auto align and auto tone. It's going to do. And you can turn auto tone on and off. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and put my deghosting back at uh, none. I'm just going to go ahead and click merge. And soon enough, you see my um, HDR DNG file. And so it's loading it. Um, it's, it's still processing the file, it seems. And so what I have now is I have this, this DNG file, which is great. Um, Photoshop's going to auto-save um, auto it as a TIFF file, which is actually rasterizing it, which in layman's terms which means that it's assigning pixels. Um, and it's sort of limited that image. Um, in its and its editing abilities, and so what I have now is if I put the exposure back to zero, you see how um, putting it back to zero is kind of um, it's expanded its dynamic range of um, now you have um, ten stops to play with, and it'll go to pure white to pure pure black, and you have these um, this flexibility in an image, and one where you're taking say you're bracketing multiple exposures, you're going to have a lot more flexibility in this. And I can circle back to this in another article in HDR. I just wanted to sort of bring in um, some of the features that this, that Creative Cloud allowed you to work with. Um, but as far as uh, Lightroom Creative Cloud and, and working that way, you have um, one last thing I want to get into is you have the, uh, the ability to do uh, Lightroom Mobile. And what you can do is you can actually, from your Lightroom Mobile account, say on your phone or on your tablet, you can sync from that to bring it to your desktop app. And that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the desktop version versus, versus the mobile version of Lightroom, which this folder links to. But what you can do is you can select a certain amount of photos, say throw them into a collection. And I'm just going to throw this into the family collection for now. And I can actually click on this left-hand side, this um, mobile feature, and it's actually going to sync. And it says that the sync's currently turned off. But I have the ability to go ahead and hit make public. It's generating my URL here. Um, but I have the ability with, the, um, with that sync turned on that will sync with Lightroom Mobile. So whenever I have more storage, it's not syncing right now because I'm out of storage. But you have the ability to, um, once you click here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to auto-sync it with uh, Lightroom Mobile. As you see it as well there. Um, but I'm going to go back into my raw. I'm going to go back into my rated image. So that's all I have for you guys today. Definitely upgrade your workflow and get Lightroom Creative Cloud.